what's up y'all so let's go ahead and get into our next reading go ahead subscribe like my channel and get my goddamn views up so remember i told y'all that if we got to 2500 views um i would start telling the tales of the times i've met celebrities and some other people's stories that have told me things about when they've met celebrities i'll incorporate some of those in there too so just know that i'm still working on that and that is still the goal for right now y'all get me to 2500 subscribers and we will introduce a new segment and i promise y'all it's gonna be funny because these celebrities ain't nothing but motherfucking regular people that have been allowed to follow a dream that they had some of them were given what it is that they were given because of their appearance some of them were given an opportunity out of sheer talent i say that to say these are just still regular people how would you view a regular person that was a little bit more affluent you know um this is how you have to view these celebrities y'all have to really stop idolizing them and even if you're not into spirituality, even if you're religious, maybe you need to pray, you know, if it's that serious to you, you know, if you just want to see why you have this strong, um, these celebrities have your attention so heavily, you need to pray and ask your God what it is that is making you so attracted to this celebrity. And it doesn't mean that you want to be with them romantically. I'm saying that because you have to be careful. There are spells at work that are being done over the industry, specifically the hip hop and R&B industry. And these people are recklessly doing this magic and they are doing these things and, and forgetting that these spells that they are casting can also affect their fans or people who listen to their music. So you have to be careful, okay? Um, if you're into spirituality, hell, ask your cards, ask your Ewas, ask your ancestors, what the hell is it? Because I guarantee you, if you are a super duper duper fan of Jay-Z, you've fallen underneath that spell that um, he was trying to cast on Aaliyah that didn't work. See, Jay-Z been into this motherfucking witchcraft shit for a long time. He's just now speaking about it. Um, <clears throat> if y'all pay attention to a lot of his older videos, there was symbolism in it way back when he was a Rockefeller. Um, before y'all got on that, um, he throwing up the uh, diamond for the Illuminati shit. He was doing that shit prior to then. He uh, potentially was one of these guys who, you know, got in contact with whomever his spirit guides were then. And they introduced him into the world of magic and being able to manipulate things. And that's exactly what he thought he was going to do to Aaliyah. I say all of that to say, this is why y'all should not idolize these people because if you strip all of that away, these people are goofy as a motherfucker. Now, not all of the celebrities, but a vast majority of them are goofies, like real life fucking goofies. And Hope is no different. Yeah, he's very accomplished. Yes, he has a vast career, but he's still a goofy ass nigga when it comes to women that he truly puts energy into. Now, yes, we know he's married to Beyonce, and I have nothing but respect for Jay-Z, even in the uh, aspect of having knowledge that I know that he practices dark magic. I have nothing against anybody that practices dark magic, especially because he is doesn't hit all of the time. See, y'all give these people these um, elevated statuses, and you become fearful of these people because of what they're projecting. Aaliyah didn't fall for that, though. I know I went a whole long way around to explain it, but I needed to say that at the beginning. I needed to preface that for y'all, excuse me, so that you can follow along with the reading and understand that Jay-Z is just like any other regular nigga who is obsessing over a woman's body, trying to take possession over a woman's body, trying to be the one who captures Oshun, if you will. Because his intentions with Aaliyah was nothing different than these other men. He uh, had an affinity for her because she was young. She was 20. He was 29 or 30 when they were fucking around. Um, she was young. And she fit the body type for the 90s and early 2000s. She was thin. Which is why I don't understand why y'all be dragging Coyle Ray so hard. Because back in the day, you niggas used to think that a thin woman like Coyle Ray was that deal. This is what Jay-Z 
issue was with Aaliyah. She was just the baddest bitch he had ever seen in his fucking life, and he had to possess her. This is what was popular then. He had intentions on doing things his way with Aaliyah. Aaliyah had other plans. Jay-Z, true, saw creativity in her, and he felt like through sex magic, because he uses that a lot, he could um, create create her into the woman that he wanted her to be, or into the woman that Beyonce is now. But we aren't gonna go into that. But anyway, um, he he wanted to use her talent and abuse her body, if you will, while he was getting what it is that he wanted to get out of the situation. So of course, he had his intent on the situation. Aaliyah also had hers. She too showing up. And I love that she's showing up underneath her own energy and that Capricorn energy because she had truly taken control of who it was she was sexually. Now, whereas that Jay-Z started, you know, falling deeper in love with her because the sex was amazing to him. It was mediocre to her, but because he served a purpose, she kept fucking him for the time being. He falling in love and, and, and getting more and more, you know, whooped by his own motherfucking spell. There's also a component of that devil card, too. The witchcraft that he was uh, trying to cast out on Aaliyah with this um, that sexual energy or that sexual magic that he was trying to put out didn't catch her the way that it had been catching anybody else that he had been doing this shit to. Aaliyah saw him as nothing more than an opportunity. She actually thought he was kind of full of himself. Like he thought a little bit more of himself than what he really truly was. Um, But she was like, whatever, I can use you for whatever it is that you have to offer me as well. I'll actually use you as a stepping stone to get to the next nigga. But we're going to get to that, y'all, because Miss Baby Girl was something else, y'all. Again, she was not that little girl. Okay, I said that over and over and over again. In each reading that I've done for her tonight, she was not that fucking little girl that y'all keep trying to make her out to be, baby. She knew that she could use Jay-Z, okay? Because she knew she had his nose wide open. She knew that he was a trick. She knew that all she had to do was sleep with him or, you know, promise him some pussy and he going to come with the gifts and he going to try to make sure that he sit in front of who she needs to sit in front of and make sure that she's around the, 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 the you know, gatekeepers, you know? Jay-Z uh, pulled her up to the table when he pulled her panties down, okay? And the more she pulled her panties down, the more opportunities or more things he got her. She didn't want no relationship with him, no, y'all. I know that there's this thing going around now, y'all. Like, y'all keep doing this dumb shit, and it got to be you motherfucking Aaliyah fans that was born in 2010. And I say that because you got to be a young-ass fan. I promise you, you got to be. If you weren't born in 2010, you damn sure wasn't born in the 90s because you would be privy to the fact that they were not in a relationship. They were really just fucking. Jay-Z was the one that wanted to make it more than that. But Aaliyah was like, yo, I got options. Again, we only know about the men that they are um, put or publicizing. But if you dig deep enough, you'll see that she had a couple of little pieces, honey. Aaliyah knew that she was that bitch, honey. She was the uh, most sought-after woman. She was the most sought-after light-skinned woman. Not that she was, you know, um, had that nasty-ass attitude. She didn't have light skin syndrome, but she had the attitude of, if I'm going to fuck around and have all these options, I might as well benefit from it. Again, she was a smart girl. She felt like, if I'm going to be dealing with these gatekeepers, I'm going to go from this smaller version of myself you know she began to gain her confidence back like i said she started changing she started becoming a woman honey she felt like if i'm gonna deal with these niggas they're gonna make me the queen of hip-hop or or of r&b excuse me r&b i know they call her a pop star too but she like they're gonna set me high up on that you're gonna make sure them hollywood doors is open you're gonna do everything i need you to do all while knowing that she had nothing really long-term planned for jay-z He didn't like that, though, y'all. You know, her whole thing was, you know, why should I fuck with you? You know, you're just the rapper. You're just the artist. She really, truly had eyes on Dame Dash in the first fucking place. Like I said, she was like, use this nigga to get to the next richest nigga. Sure, Hov was the popular artist, but Dame was the boss. 
that's who she wanted. Hove wasn't in charge. The nigga was a worker at the time, y'all. Hove didn't like that, honey. That's the that's the, the, the basis for him and Dave's uh, beef. So when she decided to get ghosts on him and going on over to the dame, and we're going to do dame read next, y'all, because it's getting juicy. When she decided to, you know, take away his pussy privileges, stop hanging out with him, stop kicking it with him, maybe leading him on a little bit, you know, telling him she going to show up somewhere, she going to kick it with him that night, and she really didn't, you know, rejecting his ugly ass. You know, she he got mad. And got in his feelings and got full of himself the way that Sagittarius males do when you reject them. See, Aaliyah didn't buy into his motherfucking romantic advances. She was no longer pouring energy into him because she had gotten what she came for. She got next to Dane. Jay-Z got in his feelings and he still heard about it. And he's still embarrassed about it because y'all know that gossip was going around that Dane had took his bitch from him. And Hope wasn't going to have that, honey. He got in the mind of, even though she had moved on, even though he moved on, if I can't have her, nobody else will. Now, let's keep going over into these next last two readings, y'all, so we can get to where Hope plays a part in what happened to Aaliyah. 